Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk with Andre, uh, Treeform on GitHub, about doing 2D graphics on the GPU. I'm Ryan, Guzba on GitHub, and uh, we both work in a programming language called NIM, and we're going to talk about how we're using NIM to do some pretty cool 2D graphics stuff on the GPU. What we're going to talk about in specific is what's called an atlas texture. So Andre, what is an atlas texture and why one might use such a thing? So an atlas texture looks kind of like this over here. So what it does is it takes multiple kind of textures that are unrelated and sticks them into a single texture mm -hmm. uh, like this. I follow. Yeah. So, so, so this is needed uh, when you want to draw something, a 2D graphics, mainly UI, right? If you want to draw the UI, you could, for instance, give every little component their own texture, their own OpenGL texture. Yeah, yeah. But that's incredibly wasteful because every time you switch textures, you have to switch a bunch of draw contexts and stuff. And that's really yeah. slow. You don't want yeah. to do a batch for every icon because like every texture, he's like two, two triangles at the top and the bottom. Like, yeah. like this will basically eat your performance a lot. And in a bigger 2D game where there's more stuff going on, it'll be, it'll be even slower. Yeah. So the whole point of uh, Atlas Texture is that you can bind one texture and then use that single texture to draw many different graphical elements in one go. Yeah, exactly. Is that kind of the idea? Exactly, okay. right. And with modern OpenGL, you want to minimize those uh, batch calls or transition calls. Uh, so yeah, this, this has been in computer graphics for a long time now. Yeah, and it's yeah, yeah it's, it's just it's Old just technique a, but a good technique exactly right so you you can produce the atlas texture in many different ways sure. like i'm not sure exactly how this was produced but it looks like it was basically drawn this way like a person okay. that drew it basically drew every component where they thought it, they would fit better and mm -hmm. then when they would draw this thing in their programming in, in a program right they had to like figure out where coordinates of each one of these is in order sure. to, to draw this thing and hopefully never move them right yeah 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 and hopefully never move them a problem with this one if like if you want to resize something like this one needs to be now bigger like you want to draw it bigger like you have to basically rearrange the entire thing and that's like annoying and then you might yeah. have to change your coordinates as well where you have those stuff so a better way is to generate these things automatically with like a script Right. Okay. So before okay. your program runs, you run a script, you have all your graphics and in individual textures, you combine yeah. them into one big texture, and then uh, you also record the coordinates of them. So when you draw your okay. UI, you know exactly like where you're drawing. It basically so it eliminates becomes... a huge manual yeah. step. So then you can resize things, change them, uh, and every time you run that script, you'll get a new texture and new locations of the, mi the, the images in the texture. So all of the burden of positioning and then worrying about moving things goes away because you have a script to do it. Exactly, exactly. But you right. have to put in the effort of creating that script and getting that working. So you might start with something by hand mm -hmm. just to like see it work, but reality is you're gonna to wanna to quickly upgrade to something generated. Yeah, ex right? exactly, exactly. Let's look at a generated Atlas texture for my previous game uh, called Istralid, right? Sure. So, so, so this is what the Atlas texture for Istralid looks like. And you can see yeah. it has some very large elements, but on the bottom here it has a lot of little bitty elements, right? Sure, Something, hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah, hundreds of them. And and that's what makes drawing fast is because I don't have to switch textures for every little part. I can just mm -hmm. like draw everything basically in one batch or yeah. nearly one batch, right? There's there's limits to that. Yeah, sure there's some limits, but but, yeah. but that's but that's the idea. Yeah, if your batch is too big, it's actually kind of better to break it up if it's a dynamic batch, but yeah, yeah, that's that's the idea here is that but here I control other things. So if I remove an image, like say I remove this part here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I just rebuild the texture without this thing and, and I have everything, right? I yeah, can also yeah. control the spacing between the textures here. There's like a margin I can specify. And you can see yeah. there's like a wide margin for, for a lot of these things here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, that's pretty good. And that's, that can be configured at the script level, just exactly. the way you want it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Like, entire really used it, and you know, it was it was, it was pretty pretty cool. So this is as far as maybe you ever need to go to really ship something, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that there's not room for improvement. Is that right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you want to generate this dynamically on the fly, right? 
as your program runs. Not yeah, as your program right. runs. Exactly, right? Because you could go a level above and generate this dynamically. Then it's like, for instance, you have a level that doesn't require this huge galaxy piece here, right? Like, yeah, it would just not be loaded, right? You need less texture memory and less texture loading time, right? I think these, yeah. these elements are only exist in the history tutorial. Again, like mm -hmm. all these elements, they don't need to be loaded every time if you're playing the normal game. Uh, sure. A bunch of these are like map elements that don't exist in every map. So it's like, yeah, you could really cut down on the stuff you load uh, for an individual level. It's really just a small game, so it's not a big issue. But imagine if you had a large game, a lot more of these elements. Uh, you would put into limits at some mm -hmm. point, right? Exactly, exactly. So a better way is to do this dynamically. But the problem with doing it dynamically is that you introduce these these gaps even here in this texture here there's like a huge gap over here and huge gap over here right and yeah, imagine yeah. if you were like adding them and removing them and adding them and removing them like the gaps would just grow it's like memory fragmentation it's just some sort of texture yeah. fragmentation here you kind of don't want that yeah maybe just to be clear so like you have that big galaxy right yep. if you if you said i don't need that anymore mm -hmm. and you you wanted to remove it you now have this big gap Exactly. Unless you put something in that's exactly the same size, you're never going to use that space as efficiently next time. Because, you know, maybe you'll put something, a bunch of small things, which is great, but then you'll end up with this maybe like half the size of all your small things edge around it or whatever that just kind of is all wasted forever from then on. Because it just didn't happen to be the perfect divisor to fit the, fit the space. Does that yeah, kind of make yeah. sense? Yeah, Ex exactly, right? If you use this kind of naive approach and you do a lot of, you know, textures, like, removal and addition, you'll get huge texture fragmentation. Okay, I think I can see how that would happen. How might one solve that problem if one wanted to be able to add and remove the textures? Exactly, so then you go into what I call a tiling atlas over here and we'll talk at length about this. But okay. uh, this is a thing that you can use through Boxy. So we have this library yeah. called Boxy and it provides mm -hmm. you this atlas, which is pretty cool. So what it yeah, does, so Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what it does, instead of storing each image like, like it is in the texture, right? What it yeah. does is it, is it basically breaks its image into 32 by 32 bit tiles, right? Yeah, and we chose 32 arbitrarily. You could pick whatever tile size you want. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, any, tile, any tiles will work. Uh, for us, 32 seemed like was a good number. Great choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you can trade off, like, see what is faster, like, depending on what kind of graphics are normal in your, mm -hmm. in, in your game or application. Yeah. Uh, so here for 32 by 32 bit tiles, uh, yeah, we break it up into little tiles and we send them over here, right? Yeah. So the cool thing here is that uh, fragmentation is no longer a problem, right? Mm -hmm. you, or at least like it's way, way, way less, right? Because you can stick huge images, you can basically, you know, cut them up in little bitty chunks, stir them in. I could remove this this image, this mask thing. I could remove it, mm -hmm. right? And then I'll have all the styles free again. So whenever another image is inserted, it will start using the, the styles again, right? Yeah. It's basically it's, a, a very ahead, compact yeah. texture. Yeah. Specifically, what's cool is that since everything is in units of 32, you don't have to worry about, oh, you removed something that's 1,512, and now you put something that's 1,360, and you've wasted like hundreds of pixels mm -hmm. all around this thing, thousands even. Um, because everything is in tile units, it, it makes it very easy to like swap things in without any wasted space. Yeah, exactly. And how we implement it, we just have like a free bit array, right? It's like really fast yeah. to, to find a spot, right? Yeah. So, yeah. If you want to insert an image, it's really quick to find a spot to where inserted and we immediately mm -hmm. tell you like where it, where it is, right? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, okay, so that will solve the wasted space problem, mm -hmm. which is pretty great. Yep. Uh, what else is this good for? Yeah, so this solves like the dynamic problem, right? The previous okay. atlas, the problem was is that it wasn't dynamic. It's really hard to position. Here, you just throw stuff in. But it quickly <laughs> produces a problem with mip maps, right? Okay. Basically, because everything is so tightly packed, the reason why I had such large margins on the previous texture atlas and why it like wasted a lot of space is because uh, you don't want you don't want your little images bleeding into other images when they're zoomed out uh, or zoomed in. Sure. So basically, what happens here is you can't do mip mapping with this really well, right? Uh, yeah. You could have you could just take a whole atlas and create different 
different mid mapping levels, but again, they will just blur into each other. It will be really terrible. So what I do here is not only do I store the image itself, I also store the mid map of the image. So you can see here, this yeah. is the mid map of this image. You have the large image yep. and then half scale, half scale, half scale, right? And I actually all store down, all yeah. these images inside here as well. So when you yeah. draw something with Boxy, it would actually like actually has to pick the mid mapping levels as well. Yeah. So and again, we do that because we we don't want these things to bleed when you're drawing, and so we have to pick it ourselves to be for sure, for sure, it's not going to sample outside of bounds or blur them together mm -hmm. or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. This also helps a little with drawing. If you're drawing a really small thing, if we, if you, it basically just draws it in less rectangles, right? Before you had to like draw, but when you map map it again, we just could. For instance, if you zoomed out a lot, you see we just have a single rectangle, single image of this here. We could just draw yeah. it singly, right? Just in a yeah, single rectangle. Right. So it's actually like an optimization mm -hmm. on both fronts. I feel like. Yeah. So uh, it makes it so that your stuff doesn't bleed without padding, and it makes it so often draws can be accomplished with less quads or triangles. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And uh, there's other optimizations we do here. Uh, yeah, because yeah, what are we, those? Yeah, so the other optimization we do here is if the tile is fully transparent, like the tile over here, we actually know it's not going to draw anything, and it's not going to do anything. It's basically just ignore it, right? Uh, okay. It's okay. not going to get drawn. It doesn't make it into the texture atlas. No it, wasted space. No wasted yeah. space, and when you draw it, it doesn't actually draw any geometry for that for that rectangle. Okay, so I'm drawing less triangles, and I'm using less texture memory which is only possible because we're breaking it up into tiles. Exactly, right? exactly, yeah. Another very optimization cool. that is very similar is solid color. As you can see, this color over here is solid white, right? Actually, a lot of tiles look yeah, like Yeah, a lot of tiles. White. Yeah, yeah, like half of this guy is like solid white, right? So sure. half of this mask. So uh, like what, you, what we do instead, actually, the first tile that we have in our tile map is always a single white color. Right? All right, and this basically allows us to draw anything, anything with a single color, because white you can just tint it by any color. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, instead of storing like a full tile, we actually will draw this tile always in white, and then just tint it. Yeah. So you're sort of deduplicating the solid color, single color tiles into one tile, collapsing them all into one. Exactly. Uh, even even across images, right? Exactly. So you could add tons of images that have tons of solid color, mm -hmm. and they'll end up taking very little space in the atlas because most of them will just get collapsed into the solid color tile. Exactly, yeah. And if you have a bunch of images with transparency, again, they will collapse pretty much all yeah. you know, into nothing, right? So the previous atlas... Yeah, yeah, that, that's cool. Yeah, the previous atlas that I shown for my Astralid game, you could see, like, just how much, like, transparent space is, like, wasted here, right? Sure. Like, like everything could have collapsed probably to something that is, like, half as much, maybe quarter as much, right? Sure. Yeah, I think it would have been really cool. And there's, like, elements in here that are solid color. Like, inside this circle here, a bunch of solid yep. color will just go away. Inside this rectangle, solid color will just go away, right? Even yep. something like this, even though it's transparent like uh yeah there's probably a couple of times oh, a little transparency is no problem right? exactly yeah. as long as it's solid color it'll just go in so uh okay yeah interesting so now another part of using a dynamic atlas if you're adding and removing is that every now and then you might need more room in general right mm -hmm. so a big part of this i would think is that happens less often because it's packed better mm -hmm. but also, when the time comes to make the atlas bigger, I have a hunch this would be considerably easier to do than a system with a bunch of images of different sizes. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, it's just resizing again is easier. You just allocate a bigger atlas, copy the texture forth, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Resizing, though, I don't think is that hard on the other atlases as well. But here's just like streamline. It's like part yep. of the process, right? Yeah, uh, sure. And let's put it this way. Maybe it's not harder, but you know, each time you double the size of a texture, you're drastically increasing the memory used, right? Mm -hmm. And when you pack it tighter like this, that will happen less, and you'll just use less memory, and, and that always just makes things faster. So yeah. it's kind of a efficiency perhaps more than it is uh, anything else. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. Um, and we talked about mint mapping. So um, I guess maybe one more thing we could briefly touch on is why did we choose to do our tiling this way instead of perhaps using a 3D texture? if someone's heard of those. Oh yeah, so we actually thought about using a 3D texture, but there's actually huge limits on it. Like it could only have, yeah. well, 
I think like or something. yeah, like two thousand, like uh, uh, depth two thousand or something, and it just doesn't work. No, I want like infinite depth, basically, right? Yeah, if three yeah. D textures didn't have those limits, they would probably be the way to go for this. But sure. since they have those kind of like really weird limits, they just they just don't work. Okay, okay. So if anybody was kind of curious, now they know. Um, and so okay, so you mentioned that this is in a library we have called Boxy. So how, you know, if if someone wanted to use this, what are the calls that they might use uh, to get up and running? Do you remember? Yeah. So I yeah, if you just import Boxy, you can use add image and then draw image. I guess we could go look at a Boxy program really quick. All right. I suppose that wouldn't hurt. If right? we go, if we go like uh, zoom or something, right? Uh, we have to probably zoom in here. You sure. go ahead and make it a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you just create a new box, all you have to do is just add image, right? And then yeah. you don't really have to think about the atlas. The image will just go in into Greece, right? And then yeah. to draw it over here, you just do draw image Greece, right? Like yeah. you didn't even care what kind of atlas it was or what it does in the background, right? All you know is that you can add other images and you can remove images and it stays pretty performant whenever you yeah. do that. Okay, okay, so so yeah, looking at what we've got here, when we add an image, you give it a name, and that's mm -hmm. how you refer to it from then on. Yes. So you can either draw based on the name or remove even based on the name. Mm -hmm. And so even though we only show one draw image here, you could do boxy.draw image, you know, maybe a hundred times mm -hmm. to, to lay down your entire game's UI yeah. in one hit. And then when you're done and you call end frame, everything gets flushed into the frame buffer. And then, you know, maybe you can proceed with whatever other drawing that you're doing. Um, or maybe this was the last thing you're done and you swap buffers. Is that kind of the general yeah. idea? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's very easy to use. Uh, you almost don't have to think about the kind of atlas that's internal. Yeah. We just thought the atlas was kind of an interesting technical piece that hopefully people mm -hmm. would enjoy hearing about, which is why we wanted to make this video. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thanks for telling me about it, Andre. I think for those that want to try this out, uh, Boxy is open source on GitHub. You can give it a try. Uh, it actually has more than we've even talked about. Maybe we'll make a follow-up sharing more of what Boxy does. But we think it's pretty cool. And uh, in specific, for those of you you know working on maybe games in OpenGL, I think this will be a really big piece of um, you know doing the UI side of your game with a lot less headaches. Yeah. Anything you want to add? No, that was pretty good. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching.